A few years back, I designed and laser cut this topographic map of the Grand Canyon. It hangs in a local coffee shop, and it's still the largest piece I've ever made. It's one of my favorites, and I always wanted to make another one like it. Since then, we've been pretty distracted building a workshop in our backyard. But now that it's finished, I think I know what I want to make next. We're going to be making a piece to help tie together the new shop. The only way to make a good design is to give yourself some constraints. So let's decide on the size and the shape of what we're going to be making. Most of this wall will eventually hold tools and equipment, but we can give up this top half. Nine feet wide to match the full width of the cabinets, and about 10 inches tall. Sort of an unconventional shape, but I think we can make this work for a river map. I'll need to be able to find a real location to draw inspiration from. My last work could use this central part of the Grand Canyon, but the shape of this next one will be a little bit more difficult. I want the river to be running down the entire length, so I'll need to find a longer straight section that still has a lot of interesting canyon detail. The Dirty Devil. It's a tributary for the Colorado River, and I think it's exactly what I'm looking for. For 20 miles, it stays fairly straight, but with lots of interesting movement as it flows through this 2,000 foot deep canyon. USGS is an awesome resource. You can find free digital elevation models for most areas of the US. And this area is so large that I'm gonna to have to download several different files to capture all of it. Then I'm opening them in QGIS where I can combine them into one file. This one black and white image is gonna give us all of the data we need to generate the terrain detail of our map. And then I'll be bringing this into my favorite program, Blender. I use it for all of my visual effects, animations, and even my video editing. But for this project, we're gonna be using it to turn a 2D image into a 3D model. I'm starting with a plane that has the same dimensions as our eventual map. It's flat for now, but I'm gonna add a modifier to influence the individual points that make up the surface. Every pixel in this image has a grayscale value, and our modifier is gonna use this to vertically displace the points of our object. The darker the pixel, the lower the elevation which makes sense with the river being the darkest part of the image. This will look really messy to start, but you'll begin to see the canyon once I give everything the proper scaling. And then I'll move the image around and get it centered up on the piece. It's easier to work on these files while the resolution is low, but now that it looks close, I'm gonna generate a higher density of points so we can get a better idea of what we're looking at. I considered laser cutting this again, but I'd like to try making this on my new A1 printer from Bamboo Lab. 3D printing this design will greatly simplify the build, since I won't be making one layer at a time. It's going to also allow me to keep the weight of the map down, using PLA filament instead of solid layered wood. Since I've already decided on a color for the map, I can choose a white filament and remove any need for painting later. And lastly, I won't have to sacrifice any of this detail. To fit on this plate, I'll have to split my design into 12 different sections, and I'm really excited to see how this is going to look, so let's start printing a small sample piece. To learn more about the A1 printer, be sure to check out the links in our description below. Up until this point, I had no plan to backlight this, but now it has to be part of the design. I'd also like to pour a blue epoxy river like I did on the last map. I really like the pop of color on a white landscape, and the blue and white will go really well with the existing space. Next, I started to draw my plans for framing this piece. I'd like to have a white frame that goes around the entire border, and 3 quarters of an inch looks right proportionally for a piece this size. But I'll also need to decide on the depth of this map. I'm going to have LED lights in the back, and I want to give 3 quarters of an inch between these and the back of the art. This will help make the backlighting more even, and I'm deciding this based on the results of a quick tabletop test. Next, we have the thickness of the map itself, and after playing with the scaling, I like how it looks with about 2.5 inches of thickness. With this stack up, I can now make a decision on the frame, which will be 3.5 inches deep. This means I can use 1x4 lumber, which despite its name, is actually the dimensions we need. In order to mount the 3D prints into the frame, I'm going to run each 1x4 across my table saw to add a groove. 
And then each 3D print will have a matching ridge that fits into this groove. I really like this solution because it avoids putting any fasteners into the 3D prints. If I use screws or other mounting hardware, you'd be able to see them once the map was backlit. And then the last detail of this frame is going to be this aluminum sheet metal. This will help provide some rigidity, but it will also be the mounting surface for the LEDs. This will act as one big heat sink to help prevent the lights from getting too warm. A small bundle of wires will run from this back up into the cabinet where I'll have a power supply hidden along with a Wi-Fi controller. It's really hard to hold back from just starting to print all of these sections, but I need to test one more part of this design. I'm going to pour some epoxy into a sample piece to see how the river will look. I'm mixing the two parts and then adding one drop of blue dye. This stuff is super potent, just a single drop was almost too dark for this batch. During the curing process, heat is going to be produced by a chemical reaction, and I don't want to risk melting my plastic canyon. So I went with a slower curing mixture, which should produce less heat. The downside is having to wait 48 hours for this to fully cure. And there's nothing worse than having to wait just for the end result to be something you're unhappy with. I was expecting the edges of this river to look much cleaner. Instead, it's puddling up and it looks more like a spill. And then even worse, it seeped into the print itself so it'll look splotchy with the backlighting. I knew there was a chance of this, but I had hoped the epoxy would be thick enough that it wouldn't be able to work itself between the print layers. It's disappointing, but this is just an opportunity to improve the design. If I had to rely on a third party for making these parts, I'd have way less time to explore ideas. But since I'm printing everything myself, it feels like nothing is holding me back. The faster you can test something, the faster you can make it better. And that's a big deal now that I have an upload schedule to stick to. So what if I cut the river out of the terrain print and I make it separately? I can print this as well and then glue it to the back of the map. With a translucent material, the light will shine through the river more easily and it'll create some contrast from the surrounding terrain. This is the direction I want to go, but it's going to be much more design work. So I'm buckling in for a long day of blender modeling. I'm going to have to go in and manually paint the river across all 12 map sections. But in the end, I'm really glad I needed to do this. It allowed me to make the river width uniform across the whole map, which is much more balanced looking. And now I can bring these finished 3D models into Bamboo Studio, where I can prepare them for printing. I'm going to set the top surface to be concentric, and this will cause the surface lines to follow the natural contours of the terrain. And it matches the style of a topographic map really well. I'm also lowering the infill level to 10%, so we'll get plenty of light through each print. And now I can finally let the A1 get to work. Having the AMS system for these prints was a huge help. People usually just talk about these in reference to printing with multiple colors, but in my case, I could just stock a couple slots with the same filament, and I wouldn't have to worry about running out overnight. Each spool has an RFID chip that the AMS can read, and it will automatically switch over to another spool of the same filament type whenever you run out. One week later, and we have all of the terrain prints finished. Like we discussed earlier, I'm gonna be using one x four lumber for the frame, and I found these 10 foot sticks that will be perfect. At this point, I decided I really liked the look of the natural wood against the white of the PLA prints. It matches the look of my work table, so I'm going to leave the frame unpainted. To locate the miter joints, I'm going to fit the whole map together so I can figure out exactly where my cuts need to be. For the final assembly, I'm using Loctite Super Glue, which does a pretty good job of securing the PLA to the wood. During the design, I was curious how easily you'd be able to see these joints between. 
between the different prints, but I'm really happy with how well they ended up blending together. The A1 was able to produce some very clean edges that definitely helped here. And to finish the frame off, I'm adding some wood glue and some brad nails to hold everything in place while the glue dries. Our sheet metal has also arrived, so I'm gonna lay it all out quickly and check the size. I ordered one of the sheets just a hair too long, so I'm gonna have to shave a little off of one end. But this was quick work with some nips. These parts came from an automated production line, and you can still see a suction cup mark left from handling these in the factory. Next, we have our translucent river to add. I'm going to be using Bamboo Lab PETG for this. All of the filaments used will be linked in the description down below. PETG can be a little trickier to print than PLA, but I'm having no issues just running the standard print profile. I just made sure the filament was properly dried before use and I was able to get these really clean results. The Bamboo Lab Wiki is a good place to start when you're trying out different materials. With my design, I wanted the river to be somewhat frosted so you wouldn't be able to see the individual LEDs, but the wiki is a great resource if you're trying to get a more transparent result. Each section has these thin flanges on each side and I'm going to use these to glue the river against the back of the PLA prints. The flexibility here means I can get good contact all the way around the edge, even if there's some misalignment between the two sides of the river. And while I'm waiting on the rest of the river sections to print, I'm going to start mounting our LED strips. I bought two 25 foot long rolls, and I'm going to mount them in place using their adhesive backs. I've reached the end of the first section, so I'll add this little clip that I can connect our wires to. And then I'll pick up with the second strip of lights. I was originally just gonna add four equally spaced rows of light, but I have plenty of extra length on the second spool, so I'm gonna add another row right down the center. I'll add another clip at the end of this one as well, and I can start soldering my wires. Let's connect these temporarily so we can make sure everything works before we finish the assembly. A day later and we're on our last print. I really like how these came out and it's a shame they won't be more visible in the finished piece.
If you'd like to recreate this project, I'm gonna have all of these files available for purchase. That includes the print files, the sheet metal drawings, and even the full Blender model. While we were building the full map, we also made this small unlit piece that you can enter to win. All you have to do is follow us on Instagram and comment on our giveaway post. We'll be choosing the winner at random one month after the posting date of this video. Thank you so much for watching and thank you again to Bamboo Lab.